Happy Frosty Friday, friends. My name is Carrie. This is Tiger Lily Designs. Welcome to my studio. Welcome to Floss Tube episode number 32. It's going to be short and sweet today because if you follow along on Instagram, my life has been crazy since last Friday, but I want to just come on here real quick and give y'all a little stitchy update. I've got a couple whips to show you. So I did get some stitching in and I'll tell you a little story of where I got that stitching in. It's totally different and new for me. Um, I've got a little bit of haul to show you just in case you haven't seen it. And uh, I got some stitchy kindness, which is super fun. And then we've got the giveaway winners from last week. We're gonna talk about what's upcoming on my channel here in the next couple of weeks. So hopefully you've got some stitching, grab your stitching, grab a beverage, and I hope you join me. So if you are new to my channel, thanks so much for checking me out. My channel is mainly about cross stitch and quilting, and I have my own small business where I sell project keepers. Um, but I just, on this channel, I like to just show you, my, share with you stitching and quilting and kind of tips and tricks and hopefully you find something you like or learn something new. Um, so normally I like to stick with this schedule and stay on point and kind of like save the family update to the end, but unfortunately it's kind of interwoven today. So give me a little grace because my whips, my whip story is a little unique, like I said. So this week, so last Friday, lots going on. Um, last Friday, I came and told you, and it was like Christmas finish extravaganza. That's what we did last Friday. So fun. Your comments were so much fun to read. Thank you so much. I hope you found maybe a new different style of finishing that you um, want to try with one of your projects that's maybe in that needs to be finished bucket pile under the bed box, wherever you keep yours. Where do you keep your whips? Do you keep not whips. Where do you keep your projects when they are waiting for their turn to be finished? Do you have, I have a, it's honestly a Lego box from my son's, he's 20. <laughs> Lego, like um, a plastic, it looks like a scrapbooking bin box. I think I've showed it to you before, but it's, it's a plastic tub um, that has all my needs to be finished piles in them. I need to have a finishing day. I kind of like, I had so much fun finishing those patriotic pillows, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. And 4th of July came and went and I still have so many more finishes to do. I just need to hunker down and get her done. But I don't know about you, summer is crazy. Um, I've got, you know, a, a, my son is going off to college his second year at Clemson. My daughter is going to be a first year, not a freshman learning the lingo at UVA this year. And so that's where we were this week. So that is the, what my little bit of family story that's kind of interwoven with my whips is opportunistic stitching. So if you follow me on Instagram, if you saw some of my posts, maybe some of my stories, cause I was at UVA for like a two and a half, three day it's a student orientation, summer student orientation. She gets to like live, stay on campus and register for classes and do the dorms and the dining hall and all the things. And then the parents have a subsequential like two day full, I should have brought my like schedule. You are, I'm scheduled from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on two days. But interwoven within that schedule is some downtime. I mean, you can only sit in an auditorium and listen to 90 minute speakers at a time teaching you how to have a resilient college student. Let me teach you about the dining, the housing, the safety, the all the different ins and outs. Of the, I mean, it, it was information overload. I appreciate it all, but it was information overload. So, but they did, thank goodness, schedule in some down like time. And so tour the campus, do yourself got a tour, or enjoy this garden or that and da da da. So anyway, during that independent time, um, you know, Lily was off doing her thing. It was like, um, drop you off at 8 a.m. and I'll see you the next day at five type of situation. So I was on my own. And so I was doing the lectures and doing the things, but then I brought along I had my bag and my notebook because I'm the parent that takes all the notes and the journals and the lectures. I mean, that's what they're for, right? Anyway, so I put in my bag. I was like, you know what? This is something I showed you guys 
in a haul a while ago, and then I might have showed you again. I've never done one of these perforated paper kits. I have a couple Mill Hills, and then I have this Satsuma Street. But the, the compactness of this, the size, the all-in-one, throw it in my bag, nothing, like even the needle was included, everything was in here, right? So I was like, this is the, I'm just gonna bring that. Now, I'll be honest, I did bring another project just in case I started this and I was like, paper is not my friend, but that is not what happened. So, opportunistic stitching. I love that terminology. Somebody used that on Instagram on one of my posts and I was like, love that. Somebody, like, do you keep an on-the-go project in your purse, in your car, in your to-go bag, in your tote, in the things, whatever you carry, in your diaper bag. I mean, are, are there any diapers anymore? Anyway, so do you, do you keep those? Are you like a, if I've got five minutes, I'm going to get two stitches in. To, hopefully you get more than two, but are you, are you one of those? Or I use, I have not been. If I plan ahead properly, like I did for this trip, and I knew there was going to be some downtime, especially like Monday night when I'm back at the hotel, Lily's at the dorm living her new best life, and I'm, you know, watching Floss Tube on my iPad, stitching away in the hotel. But the moral of the story is... So I'm a convert on two points. Opportunistic stitching is totally my jam. I think I'm going to do better about having a to-go project. Maybe like always one of these ornament kits because they're easy. I can see the holes. I can see what I'm doing as long as I have the right glasses. Now I have a pair like my regular reading, see all the thing glasses. They're one script. My actually stitching glasses are obviously stronger. I only have one pair and those usually just stay in my stitching bag. So I might get another pair of those just to keep with my on the go project. But anyway, the moral of the story is not only am I an opportunistic, opportunistic word of the day, um, stitcher convert, I'm also perforated paper junkie because this is fantastic. Now let's see if I can find a way to show you. Now, I showed, I sneak, sneak peeked some of this while I was at UVA showing you guys my progress as I was on campus. So much fun. Now, what I did is I put it on, I did this before I went down, just a little bit of organization because if you've ever gotten one of these kits, what comes out of the kit is one of those hot mess, it says light red, dark red, Actually, there's no red. One red, light pink, medium pink, peach, yellow. So it tells you the numbers, but there's no way for you to know that this is, you know, this red is 3801, unless you're like super DMC wizard. Anyway, so what I did before I left is I punched holes in one of my project information cards, and then I went ahead and I labeled it the way they, that one yellow, yellow light green, medium green, pink. So that way when I was actually able to stitch, it was ready to go. And I was just, um, because it's DMC, super great. You just pull, take your needle and just grab and pull out two strands. I pre-cut it so they're all 18 inch strips. They come in one, one yard um, increments. And so there is plenty. So if you for let's reference back. So here, this is the cute little Satsuma. Almost done, right? I just have to finish this beard. But then we got to get to the beading. I'll be honest with you, a little scared about the beading. Not quite sure, but it's going to be great. That's the moral of the story. It's going to be great because the finished product is just so cute. So the beading is challenge one, the next challenge. And then the next challenge after that is actually like finishing it. That does not come in the kit. You have to supply your own like felt thing. I think Mama Loves You GB has... She did some with the Mill Hill kit. I don't remember if she did a tutorial or if she just talked about what she did. Getting that sticky jeweler felt stuff on the back. I don't know. So um, I'm going to see. What, what I was telling you is there's so much thread in this kit. So all I have left is the white, right? All the other stitching is done. The pink, the birds, the trees. All, so that's all. If there's a space, that's where a bead's going to go gonna be fun. All the beads I think are put on with the white floss. So there's so much more floss in here. Like if I wanted to stitch it twice, I could. I mean, I, I, I only need one on my tree. But I, I think that's fascinating that there's so much extra floss that comes with the kit. So, you know, in case you were wondering, 
you could stitch it once. I could probably stitch it twice with the amount of floss that's left over. So that was my biggest whip for the um, week as I worked on that ornament. I'm hoping, I think maybe one more night. So that's the struggle. Like now I want to stitch this and get it done because it's so close. Well, it's not close, it's at least to the point where beading is ready. And I, I don't think I can bead on the go. Um, and okay, so if you bead, I need some help trying to figure out, I've seen, never beaded before, that Mirabilia's ornaments, perforated paper, never done the beading, but I've seen different beading, like tricks and tools and things like Allison Crafty something or other. Oh, gosh, I forget. I've gotten like thread pullers from her before and she's got needle minders. But I thought there was like a sticky bead, like, so the beads come in a Ziploc bag. Of course, it's not in the bag. I took it out because I didn't want them to get lost as I was traveling. So it's just a little smaller Ziploc bag with a bunch of beads inside. Well, I don't think that's the most ideal way to, to grab the bead out of a bag. There has to be like a beading tray or a sticky doodad. I've seen them. Like I need to go to Fat Quarter Shop and figure out what, what they have one. I went to Etsy and I Googled it or if I searched it. And I don't know about you, but anytime you search anything in Etsy, 7,000 things come up. And so if I don't know exactly what I'm looking for, Etsy's a little overwhelming right now. So if you have a tested, tried and true beading, doodaddy, attachment sticky so the beads don't fall and I don't lose them when I'm on the couch trying to finish this thing, share with me. Send me a DM or put it in the comments in case anybody else wants to know. So that was whip number one. Whip number two, like I told you, I brought along one other one just in case I started the perforated paper and I was like, mm, she's not my jam, but that is not what happened. So the other one I brought was Peppermint Pals. Now Peppermint Pals was um, a March Mania start and I am chugging right along. Sorry for the, you know, mid-progress. <laughs> White is there, so obviously like I do, I had some white loaded up, ready to go, because it was just filling. I didn't want to like be the lady sitting there trying to reference a chart and do all the things, so loaded the white was great. So I thought I'd bring this and show you guys. Remember, these two are a pair. They're gonna be so cute. Look at the cute little friends. Santa, I showed him to you guys last week, and this is my cute little peppermint pal, snowman friend. I don't, mm, peppermint. I don't even think there's any peppermint. I guess he does have peppermint in his little thing. Anyway, so that was one I was working on. So these are um, with a needle and thread, Brenda Gervais, super cute. Um, I'm trying to get a couple more Christmas because July, Christmas and July stitching, so fun. That was all my like actual sit and like floss in the fabric thread, but I made up for my lack of stitching in my hauling. Mm-hmm, sure did. So in case, I don't know if, I'm sure you've seen this, but um, just in case you hadn't, I almost kitted one of these up like two nights ago when I got home because I was like, oh, I need these. Are you a part of Teresa Colgate's Patreon? Because these Christmas patterns are what got me. I'll be honest with you. I've been looking. I almost joined two months ago when she had that Patriotic USA star ornament. So cute. Rachel and Sue from Floss Toss showed it. And I was like, oh, so close. But it's the Santa. And of course, obviously, I signed up for tier four. Mm -hmm. Got them all printed out. I almost kitted it up. I wanted to do. Now, she, of course, she charts in DMC. Super great. But you know, I love a variegated coat. So like Santa and his red low coat and all the variegated, this Buckeye Scarlet, love that for Santa's coat. And so I need to find, I went to my stash and that's why I didn't get started. I'll be honest with you. I didn't have a, oh, but hold on a minute. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have a green on the wall. That's because this giant bayberry which you don't even need that much green for this little peppermint. It's just the vines on the side. But I have a 10 yard skein of Gentle Arts Bayberry. That, gotta love it when things just happen live and in person. 
I think that's going to be my Santa coat. I wanted a variegated green. I wanted a, a green that was going to have some variegation. Not that a solid green coated Santa isn't gorgeous and prim, but I just wanted a little bit of modeling or a little bit of variegation in my green. Give it some texture, some dimension. And I think I've got a perfect LFA linen, dunes on dusk, 18 count, half yard, just waiting for this Santa. Mm, might be a new start. So anyway, instead last night when I was going to kit off that Santa, went to my floss wall, no green. So then I was moved on. What else can I kit up instead? So what did I pull out and do? <laughs> Pulled out one of my project keepers and I showed this to you guys during my Christmas haul. I kitted up the fourth day of Christmas from Hello from Liz Matthews. I'm so excited. So if you don't know, I am doing all of the samplers. I'm doing, I'm a sampler girl. The trees are gorgeous doing the samplers. And my plan is to stitch them, stitch them all separately. And then I'm going to incorporate them into a wall quilt. I've got some time. She's only up to day six. Although I think she's teasing that the seventh day might be coming out in the fall market. It's not called market, but whatever they're doing in the fall, the releases that happen in the fall, October, September, August, sometime it's coming. I don't know the terminologies, but this coming, I think is when she's going to release it. So I need to get my button gear because I only have two out of the six done. And of course I picked the one with, oh my gosh, do you see all that coverage? But that's okay. I love some fill-in stitching. So I kitted it up. Now I have done a custom color conversion. She charts in MPIs. She has a thoughtful DMC conversion. And then I did my own Miss Sadis color conversion. So, sorry. So I used my old logo. So I pulled my Miss Sadis um, silk. I have a full collection from Miss Sadis. And I just took the time last night and just looked at the picture, looked at the DMC color, tried to find one that was comparable, pulled out my conversion chart, did all the converting and whatever. So I'm doing mine on a 14 count country cream by Zweigart Ada. I got a yard or two of it, I think from Fat Quarter Shop, because I wanted them all to be on the same. So I know that when I showed you this last time, I didn't know what it was called, but I referenced and looked it up so I could show you. I've got my project information card over there on my desk actually, but since I didn't get this cutie started last night, I didn't bring it. Hopefully next week, I'll actually get some stitching in. I don't know what the plans are for this weekend. I kind of would love a low key sit on the house. <laughs> How great would it be if it rained all weekend? I know that's not very nice but I don't feel guilty. Do you feel guilty? Like if you take a day and just sit and stitch. Okay, mama, I'm filming, so I'm not gonna answer. Had to tell my mama I couldn't answer the phone. Um, So, guilty. Do you feel guilty? I don't, I, just, I don't know. Sometimes the, the to-do list, the chore list, the vacuum, the laundry, the cleaning of the things, the chores, the work, the day jobs, the other day jobs, the, all the, but I don't feel bad. At least I don't feel as bad. I can't do outdoor gardening and weeding and all that comes with that if it's raining. So sometimes secretly I kind of, I kind of used to do that when the kids were little and they would play sports and football and all the things. And I mean, like who needs to go to three baseball games? three nights in a row. Sometimes you need a rain out. I don't know. Maybe you don't. Good on you. But I did. Anyway, I'm hoping I'm going to get some good stitching in because I've been running around like a chicken with my head cut off. Um, so anyway, I've got that kitted up. It is going to go sit in my stitching chair waiting to get started. So what I've got to show you, that was my stitching. Holy cow, I feel like this is already too long. I thought it was going to be a five-minute video because I really hadn't done much. But I wanted to show you a couple things. Like I said, haul. I got a little bit of haul. So fun. A little bit of stitchy kindness. Let me show you. There is a lawn service next door. I'm guessing you hear that. If you do, 
I'm so sorry, that's not my lawn service, that's my neighbor's. And this is when I have to film. So hopefully you don't have headphones on listening to the lawnmower. Um, so I wanted to just show you the haul that came in because it's really fun. Now, if you don't know, today was my Project Keeper release. I'm not going to dwell on the on shop update. There's no shop update. Um, the Project Keeper is released today at one o'clock. As I'm sitting here filming this right now, there are still a handful left. We're going to have to haul. Hold on. Sorry about that, although it's not really an interruption for you because of the magic of video editing. Yay! My neighbors are getting their lawn and the dude was like right there on the other side. Anywho, but now I think it's far enough away where it might be a little background noise, but it's not like in your face. Anywho, Project Keepers, yay! Today is July 15th, so 24 of them released today and then I had five of my Floss Keepers. The reason I'm showing them to you is because of the haul that I got and I'm loving this versus what I used to do. I used to do a button, like a hand stitch wrap button. And of course my project keepers have a Velcro flap. So you could do that instead. But this week, last week, I ordered on Amazon this super stretchy, colorful bag of, they use it for like baby's headbands. It is so soft and so fun and so colorful. I will link it down below if you are in the market for some elastic, colorful elastic. But it's half inch wide, like I said, super colorful, super soft and stretchy, and it is perfect to hold the floss keepers closed. So my floss keepers are kind of like inserts in that you can, little subsequent just to hold the bobbinated things. So you could use this. For your project keepers so if you make project keepers and you don't like the flappy part of it maybe you just do one of these it's i don't know if it's strong enough it depends on how full you put fill it how much you fill up your project keeper um but i love this elastic it was super reasonable i think it's like 40 yards for i don't know a super great price you couldn't even get five package of it zit at the big box store here locally. So I wanted to share with it, that with you in case you needed some elastic for your sewing stash that came in. Okay. The biggest treat that I got myself is in this cute little box. Like I told you guys, I think a while ago that I had gotten lucked into some 18, 18 count Ada from LFA Linens. And so you get that from Treehouse Fiber Arts. And so I'm on there and I'm like, add to cart, add to cart, add to cart. Working on um, enhancing my neutral collection so that I, when I want to kit something up, I have choices right here on hand. That's what I wanted. But as I was there, I was like, let's go just check out her accessories um, area. Do you know what she had? Okay, so full disclosure, they could all be gone. Sorry, um, but I had seen these and on many a floss tube and Nicola from, you know, Hands Across the Sea, of course, was, but I could never get my hands on one like in person. So I'm on Rachel's Treehouse Fiber Arts and I'm like, oh my gosh, she got Kohana scissors. Now, first of all, she didn't tell us because I immediately got out of the car. First of all, I put them in my car and checked out. Okay, Whew. didn't want to miss out. But then I went and I messaged her, Rachel, and I said, um, did I miss a floss tube? Did you tell us you were getting these? Like, she said, no, it's just super secret. Okay, so newsflash, I'm spoiling it. Sometimes there's secret stuff. You have to just go check it out. Okay, but I'm opening it, like I hadn't opened it. Such a cute little box. So anyway, I treated myself to a pair. Oh my gosh, it's like a microfiber um, cloth. Oh, yeah, I got the rosy pink ones. Hold on, got a bunch of papers. Oh my goodness. Look at how sweet those are. And of course I can. Let's see if it sees any, says anything. Oh my goodness, how dirty my glasses are. Kohana, look at this nice leather sheath. Ooh. Sometimes you just need to spoil yourself. I'm not, I haven't, I haven't had a scissor collecting problem in the past. I might now. Thanks, Rachel. 
Just kidding. I love them. Um, these are the nice pink dusty rose ones. Like I said, they might all be gone. But I do believe that she's going to like start maybe selling them when they come out with new colors. I don't know the the they release four new colors once a quarter, twice a year. I'm not up on the on the news flashy lingo thing. But the moral of the story is these are gorgeous. They feel wonderful in your hand. I haven't snipped a thread with them, obviously, because I just took them out of the package. But I'm sure Japan knives, so Patrick is a knife guy, and like Japanese knives are primo. So I'm gonna guess that these Japanese made scissors are pretty primo. But I'll have to show him. He'll be, he'll, he'll think they're super fancy, but they come in this cute little box. What am I gonna do with that box? So fun. All right, so that was my cute little haul, my little Amazon elastic, my Kohana scissors. Mm, spoiler. Um, let's do the giveaway winners from last episode, just in case you've stuck along and you entered last week. Hopefully you're still here, cause Debbie, Domingle, congratulations, you won the frost pattern from last week. And Bonnie Schaefer, you won the gingerbread pattern. So if you are Debbie or Bonnie, get a hold of me. My contact information is down below in the description box. There's my email. You just comment, send me an email saying, hi, my name is, I won this, give me your mailing address and I will ship these off to you. I'm actually headed over to the PO box here in a little bit because I've got all my project keep, which is why I'm late to coming to you guys today. Like I said, today was Project Keeper Day. So at 1 p.m. they all launched. I sit there at 1.05 and I start packaging them up. If you've ever gotten a Project Keeper from me, you know they come with a handwritten card. Spoiler, I just wanted to show you guys. In case you've ever noticed, the handwriting's different, right? So I have Lily, my daughter, write the thank you card the thank you for your purchase and then i go in and i personalize it and add your name and i add your name to the envelope so this way it's just a little bit more efficient and it's a family business so she needs to participate too um anyway so i wrap them all up with your thank you card your project information card your handwritten notes and your cute little pink bubble mailer they're going out today. So I'm headed over to Mount Vernon Post Office here once I finish. Maybe while this is uploading, I'll hop down. But I did want to show you two more things. All over the place. I really need to get better about making a list so I'm not all over the place. But anywho, um, what did I wake up to this morning? 5K subscribers. Not that anybody's counting. But wow, so excited. Thank you guys so much. I'm having so much fun with this channel and meeting friends. And I mean, I can't wait for retreats to actually meet people in person and I'm DMing and I'm Instagramming and I'm story, I like all the fun. So, so, so much fun. And I'm so excited. So not only is the 5K celebration that it's not today because I just woke up to it today. So I need a little bit more time. But I also looked up just for reference, when was my first video? Video, Because I knew that I started my floss tube channel in August. It was one of those things I was preparing for my, for Noah to leave to go to college. And it was one of those like mom anxiety, I gotta keep busy type of thing. So I'd started, I did my floss tube number one. And I looked and it's August 5th. Coincidentally, that is a Friday. And Friday, three weeks from now is August 5th. So that is gonna be my one year floss tube anniversary don't know how you floss tube anniversary one year plus the 5k celebration so mark your calendars mark the things august 5th that friday it is gonna be a wah 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 party cannon type of celebration what am i gonna have i don't even know yet there's gonna be giveaways and extravaganzas maybe i'll do a live i don't even know all i know is that's the day i gotta start planning it's gonna be so much fun. I can't wait. Okay, so the last thing I have to show you was a sweet little stitchy kindness. Now, I, if you don't know, like my project keepers, my floss keepers showcase vintage stitching a lot of the times. And yes, I do source my own vintage stitching at antique stores, online, like 
my, my grandmother's under the bed box. But then I also get, they get sent to me from my subscribers, from my viewers. They say that I found, you know, this was my great aunt's collection. I don't know what to do with it. I'm not using these table linens. Can you give them a new life? So a lot of the linens that I use come from me in that way. Well, sometimes also as a save the stitches type person, people like to send me like actual stitched pieces. I haven't decided, so this is the first like collection of cross stitch pieces, oops, sorry for taking the table, um, that have come to me. And so I'm still noodling. Feel free in the comments, would love your input as to what you think I should do with these. Whether I should give them away individually for somebody who wants them and is going to either frame them or use them or enjoy them in a way that they were originally intended, stitched and hung up and enjoyed in that way. So option one. Or I could, like I do with the project keepers and the vintage stitching, turn them into a functional usable piece um, that a stitcher could enjoy. So they're kind of dual purpose. Project bags, I haven't made a bag in a while. Floss keepers, thread beds, I just, what do you, what do you, how do you think, I want to give these things their best, like, their best opportunity, um, but in the meantime, I do want to show you too. So this is my friend Pat, she sent me a collection of stitching, and so I'm just going to show you too. Of course, I don't know anything about these things, there's no patterns, there's no anything. I can't tell you the designers. I can't tell you anything. But in case you see something that speaks to you, I, I don't know. I, I we're just gonna see. Okay, first of all, does this not speak to you? Look at this. It's Holly Hobby. Okay, so as someone who is 46, that's how old I am. For the, this is my jam. This is my generation. I I think I was probably Holly Hobby you know, in the 80s, so cute, beautiful stitching. And then the, there's this sweet one. So this one, I'm trying to see if it looks, I just, I think this one wasn't backstitched. I was gonna say maybe it wasn't finished stitching, but the, the white is there, it just wasn't backstitched. So it's like this, they're friends, they're related, but I think she's just needing some backstitch to kind of like outline her, but so sweet. I mean, other than that, she's done. So there's to the two Holly Hobbies, and then we get into this Precious Moments, which also a child of the 80s and 90s. I remember, look at all that backstitch. And then, oh my goodness, there's two of these. Oh, so sweet. So this is all Ada stitching, beautiful ironed work. And then two more, look at these sweet girls. Oh my goodness, like in a little twins room, purple and pink. I don't know. I don't have any twins, but I think that is just the cutest. Maybe you're a grandmother with twin granddaughters and you need that in their room. I don't know, let me know. I'm trying to, I want to do them, you know, the, the time that was put into these things is Amazing, amazing. I want to stay, save the stitches the best way I can. So <clears throat> let me know what you think. Well, let me know your ideas, your thoughts, whether I should like do a giveaway, whether I should, I don't know. I don't know, let me know what you're thinking. Okay, so that is it for today. I had more Christmas to share with you. It's right there, but you know what? There's next week. Next week is still July. Maybe I'll actually have some more Christmas stitching. Maybe, since the Project Keeper sale is done, I'll, I'll get some Christmas finishing in. How great would that be? I have Christmas ornaments to finish from the 12 Days of Christmas Vipsters that I haven't done. I think I only have like three months left. Anyway, lots to do, but I hope you're having a great day. You've got some great stitching. You have stitching plans, and I will see you next time, friends. Happy stitching!